Genealogists love books and I am no exception. In this video, I'm going to give you a peek at my genealogy bookcase and share with you some of the books that I use in my genealogy research, as well as the types of books that I use as, to help me further my research. So stick around because I've got lots of books to share with you. If we haven't met before, I'm Lisa, genealogy researcher and author, and the YouTube channel is designed to help you find your ancestors, grow your family tree, but not be overwhelmed in the process. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, you are in the right place. Now I have to ask you, in the past few years have we've been on more and more Zoom calls and virtual meetings, do you ever find yourself looking behind the speaker at their bookcase to see what books are on their bookcase? Okay, I am guilty of that, yes. Because I want to know what other people are reading and I'm curious if I can get some new recommendations for my own bookshelf. So here's a fun fact about when I make videos. That's actually the reason I don't make a lot of videos directly in front of my bookcase. Oh well, now you know. All of the books that I mentioned, I will have links to them in the description below so that if you're interested in learning more about them or, or purchasing them for the yourself, you'll be able to find that easily. Now there is no particular order to this book, to these books that I'm gonna share with you. In fact, I'm sitting here at my desk and I have three big piles of books here, but stay with me and I'm gonna share with you what I've got. So. Now, the first book that I wanted to share with you is a fabulous book for beginners. It is a new book that is out. It is by Drew Smith, Generation by Generation. It is a fabulous book to get you started and walk you sequentially through the process of searching for your ancestors. So you definitely want to take a peek at that, especially if you're just getting started on that genealogy research journey. Now, one of the books that I use frequently because I research so many North Carolinians in my research is the North Carolina Research by Helen Leary. It's a big, thick book, but it is kind of the handbook for genealogy research in North Carolina. So I would encourage you, first of all, if you have North Carolina ancestors, you want this book. Trust me. If you don't, that's good. Check and see if there's an equivalent to that for your state or region where you research. Now, another book that I use is actually the North, North Carolina Gazetteer. So it's a dictionary of places that are in the state of North Carolina. Now, obviously I do a lot of North Carolina research, but I like the, what the Gazetteer does is it, when I get them through it, it has the names of different towns, creeks, ridges. I'm looking through here to see what else, um, islands. And it lets me know where those things are located. It lets me know where those little tiny creeks are located. It will also let me know and indicate if there's a, if it was known by another name. So it's a great thing that when I'm reading those deeds and looking through the records and I come across locations that I am not familiar with and I'm not sure where they are, I can look them up in the Gazetteer and pinpoint them in, on the map. So this is a great addition to anybody's research. Um, so I would look for a Gazetteer close to for the area where you are researching. When we research our genealogy, we need to make sure we are citing our sources and making sure that we know where they're at. If you um, are researching and if you are pursuing certification as a genealogy researcher, definitely everybody needs the evidence explained by Elizabeth Schoen Mills. Now, another book that I use frequently is by Sonny Morton and Harold Henderson, and it is the How to Find Your Family History in U.S. Church Records. It's the genealogist guide. Guys, this is one I use frequently when I'm in the research process. So I keep it close at hand. It's, I can reach it and pull it right off that shelf and I'm good to go. So this talks about the types of records that various denominations and various churches would have created in the US and where to find those records. So I cannot recommend this one enough. This is one you definitely want to have on that bookshelf. Okay, so you guys know that I absolutely love a good cemetery research trip. I've done a number of videos about cemetery research. I'll link them in the um, upper right hand corner for you to see. But what I always take with me when I'm out doing research in the cemetery is this book called Stories in Stone. It's by Douglas Keister and it's a field guide to cemetery symbolism. Because you know that symbolism tells us something about that ancestor and it's important that we understand that what the tomb is tombstone is actually saying whether it's in words or whether it's just by design so this is one that goes into my cemetery research backpack when i'm going and definitely one i'm i'm using quite frequently if you enjoy learning about new and interesting genealogy resources and tools for your research be sure and hit that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner and you'll be notified when i when i upload new videos here on the are you my 
cousin YouTube channel. So the next set of books that I want to show you and talk about are the books that I use when it comes to researching the social history around my ancestor. Again, social history is such an important piece of our ancestors. It's one thing to find them in the records, and we all want to do that, definitely. We're, that's what we're working for, right? But sometimes in order to find and determine you know, who they were in the records, where they went, why they made the decisions they made, we have to understand what their life was like. So I actually read quite widely on various topics that would be related to ancestors or periods of time in history. So for instance, this one you've seen before, it's called A Bental Brief. And this is letters, it's 60 years of letters from the Lower East Side to the Jewish Daily Forward, which was the, a newspaper in New York. In fact, it is still in publication today. This, because I research a lot of Eastern European Jewish immigrant populations that came over, this allows me to read their letters to the editor about their struggles that they're having, the questions that they have trying to make it in this new land. It allows me to understand what were their struggles? What was their daily life like? So that then I can pursue and start to piece their lives of my ancestors together. Do I find um, the ancestor, you know, my husband's ancestors in these books? No, not necessarily. Actually, no, none of them actually have names to them, but I do understand the life and that's important. I have to understand what they saw and what they felt when they were here in America. Another one that I do now, I do a lot of research in um, on, into my brick wall ancestor who happens to be an Irish woman who came over and that is this book called Aaron's Daughters in America because I recognized that I had to understand why Joanna came over but not just why she came over but what happened as soon as she got off that ship where did that ship land and what happened to her? What was the process? What was her life like and how in the world or why in the world would she have ever left, say, New York where she came in at and ended up in the foothills of North Carolina? I have still am working on that one, but I had to understand that. And so Aaron's Daughters in America talks about it's dedicated and talking about the Irish immigrant women in the 19th century here in America. So I have been reading this to learn about what her life might have been like to have made and why she may have made the decisions she made. So this is an important one to do. Now, I also have been reading, um, here's another one, uh, back to my Eastern European Jewish ancestors. There's this one called The Great Departure. It's about the migra mass migration from Eastern Europe into the free world. This is a wonderful um, book. It's, it's a bit technical at times, but I find it so helpful to understand the process and how it worked when the ancestors decided to leave Eastern Europe for America, what actually happened and how that process worked for them. And wow, all I can say is our ancestors were amazingly strong and resilient people. Now you guys know I also have a real strong interest in culinary heritage. So I actually have been reading some books on that. Now one of them is called 97 Orchard. It's about the edible history of immigrant families in one New York tenement. So this is a fabulous book. Um, I know that I've seen these at some of the public libraries and it's, it details five different families of different from who immigrated from different countries. And it talks about the foods that they ate. And guys, we understand our ancestors when we understand what they ate. And so this is a fabulous book to learn a little bit more. There's also, this is a new one that I have. I've, I've just barely dipped my toe in and I'm so excited about it, but it's called another one called Hungering for America. It's about Italian, Irish, and Jewish foodways in the age of migration. So um, food played such an important part in our ancestors' lives that we have to understand it. We have to know what it was and understand it in order to understand their lives a little bit better. And then lastly, this is one that's um, I'm finding quite fascinating. It's been out for a lot for quite a while. I just never had read it. It's called The Cooking Gene by um, Michael Twitty. And this is a fabulous, this is a journey through African American culinary history in the Old South. This is a fascinating book and he's beautiful written. I love his language, it's, it's absolutely amazing. And he's quite well known in this world for culinary heritage. Again, once again, it's not just about the foods. It is about the foods, but there's the attitudes behind the foods. It's, it's um, how he discovered his own heritage 
and his own self-worth through foods of the African Americans in the South. So this is definitely a book that you want to read. He's got a second one out that I plan on reading as well. Okay, so those are the kinds of books I have. I have like how-to books. So I have that that North Carolina genealogy book on the shelf, those how-to books, this, the citation book. I have books on um, different aspects, di such as religious records in, in the U.S., because that's such an important part for many of my ancestors' lives. And then, of course, as you can see, I have a number of books on social history that I want to read surrounding the lives of my ancestors. So those are the kinds of books that are on my bookshelf that you can peek at over my shoulder when I do the occasional video in front of my bookcase. And I hope that you find these interesting. Now, I do have all the links below. As you go forward in your genealogy research, learn more about how to create those successful genealogy research plans, incorporating social history as well in this video that's on your screen now.